Hello everyone. All right. Attempt number two, day number three. <laughs> and we're going to see if we can uh, finally see the Starlink launch today. Um, I hope you can hear me. At least my program's telling me that my microphone's running fine. And I'm always really um, skeptical about that streaming software. But it seems to be running and everything seems to be fine. There are no warnings. Should all be good. Thank you very much. Um, lots of people showed up already. It's already six six hundred people um, climbing fast right now, and I can understand that it's a Starlink launch. And uh, wow, the chat's going very nice. Thanks for the t sound check. That is the first thing I always do. Um, it's that that new Rode microphone that I bought like a a week ago, so it's all still new hardware. But it's it seems to be doing pretty well. UK is here, Lisboa, very nice. 
Ole, very nice. Thanks for showing up. India, seen all. I've I've been watching the chat for I don't know the last forty five minutes or so on and off. You've you've seen me uh, right in there. Um, Frankfurt, very nice. Florida, Netherlands, Brazil, Norway. Thank you guys. Vietnam, UK, again Florida. I'm so <laughs> looking forward to my trip to Florida. By the way, there's gonna be. Um, a little uh, news about that on tomorrow's episode. I just recorded that this morning because I wanted to have that pressure test in there. Belgium, France, it's going. Sweden, Australia, Spain, Serbia, Berlin, Bayern, very nice. Portugal, Serbia again, Sweden, oh my god, guys. <laughs> South Africa, very cool, far away from me. Lithuania, Ghana, seriously? Are you fooling us or is that really from Ghana? That would be awesome. Korea, very nice. Asia, Philippines, that is really cool. I'm always happy to have some some Asian people on the on the live streams because it's it, it kind I if I look into my statistics, Asia is really really small in there. And so that's always something special to me, but everybody's special showing up. So you guys rock. Amsterdam, Norway again, Poland, Denmark, India. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up. It's just, it's just incredible. Very, very cool. Czech Republic, Bulgaria, lots of Eastern Europe. Very cool. Hungary, very, very cool. Füssen, very cool. <laughs> I'm probably one of the few people in the in the in the chat that can that can actually say that correctly. <laughs> Kiel, very nice, very cool. Frankfurt, lots of Germans. Nuremberg, very cool. I like. Thank you for showing up. All right, um, I've been watching the Twitters. Um, uh, SpaceX has just tweeted like, um, I don't know, 10 minutes ago or so, 12 minutes ago, that their goal for launch still, and that their live stream is gonna, the webcast is gonna start 15 minutes prior to launch. And that is another hour, roughly, hour and three minutes. So we're, we're getting close. And uh, for, I'm, I'm pretty sure all of you know what's going to go, what's going to happen today. But uh, to just sum it up real quick, it's uh, Starlink launch number four, number three with uh, version one uh, satellites. It's going to be 180 version one satellites today if if they deploy them to orbit. And in total, it's going to be two, uh, roughly 240 because a few stopped working. Um, it's going to launch from uh, um, Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral. And we're going to have a recovery of the fairings today, hopefully. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to look forward. Of course, the booster landing is going to be pretty nice. The deployment of the satellites is going to be roughly an hour after launch. And uh, where I'm, I'm guessing that I'm going to I'm going to stream a fair bit after that as well. Um, weather looks good so far. It's 80% uh, favorable. On the launch side, we have a slight chance for a cumulus cloud rule. So if, if the clouds are mean and they come in, it could still be a scrub, but it looks pretty good. And uh, um, the SpaceX fleet, the ships are in position already. So we're looking good for launch here right now. So and there is no other news right now. Nothing, nothing new that would uh, say against that. So we could be lucky today, and it's uh, it's been a, a, a cursed launch so far. It's been scrubbed, like I said. It's it, it was I, I had a stream on Monday if you've watched that, and it's got scrubbed. And then it it was supposed to launch yesterday, and but they scrubbed that again because of uh, rough seas in the recovery area, and uh, then they they switched it today. So. And if I stream, they will come. If SpaceX launches rockets, they will come. But thank you very much for, for watching the launch on my stream, which is really, really nice. If you got the time, like the stream, because there are 742 people watching right now, and it's 115 likes. The, the likes help a lot to, to push the stream up in the trending tab on YouTube. So that actually helps a lot to show others that the, that the live stream is going on. I can only do so much to, to promote it. I've, of course, put it on Twitter and uh on my website, if you don't know that yet, it's always worth watching my Twitter uh, um, because I I post a lot there, also about the about the live streams, episodes, uh, everything that Elon says, any any news, I'm, any stuff I'm researching right now, so it can be pretty interesting as well. 
and uh, so far there's nothing new from SpaceX so we're still good for go we're, we're still go for launch right now so uh, we'll have to wait and see um, if this actually works today all right um, okay uh, now I get uh, Marcus house is here could you just please real quick write something in the in the chat so I can finally make you a moderator on one of my live streams, which I would love to do, but I have to click you on the chat. So I'm waiting for that right now. Thank you very much for showing up, by the way. It's an, it's an honor to have you here. If you're still there and I didn't miss you, which happens all the time. There you go. <laughs> hey, mate. Um, there you go. You should be a moderator now. You, sh you have the power of the wrench. Thank you very much for uh, modding for me. It's an honor um, having you here. And I'm very much looking forward to our collaboration episode. We really have to do that. There's another one that is pushing in already. Another collaboration that I'd really like to do. So we got to get going on that one. Um, but we will. I'm very sure about that. All right. <clears throat> me be blue exactly thanks for showing up uh thanks thanks to all the australian people and well actually marcus is from tasmania tassie as he says um but that's close enough for me or for european that's all the same um thanks for showing up it's it's in the evening at your place right now right roughly like eight or something should be eight so we got all the time zones in the world here right now it's SpaceX. They are drawing in people from all over the world. It's 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 just incredible. I mean, I said that on the on the on the chat um, before the stream started that it's a it's a it's just business as usual this week for SpaceX. Two to three crazy things every week. It's just <laughs> awesome. Um, so here we go. If you've watched the pressure test yesterday, if you haven't watched that yet, I'm gonna have it on my episode tomorrow. The Starship pressure test that was epic basically the the uh, it exploded but it exploded at the right point so uh, that's a, that's good news and the the explosion was epic if you haven't watched it yet and you can't wait go uh, search for it uh, at um, NASA spaceflight they have a very very nice video about it but it's going to be on tomorrow's episode as well James Webb space telescope is delayed again seriously no please that was a highlight for this for for well i wanted to do a collaboration with um martian colonist ryan if you know him he's uh he's uh, already been accepted at the carl sagan institute and he's going to be working with the james webb space telescope there is a what about it discord but it is patron exclusive if one of the moderators could put a link to the patron into the chat it's just one dollar per month and it's basically to keep I don't have anything against them, but it's better without them, the trolls. And if you have an open Discord, I've seen many space-related open Discords, and it's just very, very crowded with people that don't really belong there. And that's that's the reason why I made it uh, patron exclusive. It's, it's just $1 a month. And that basically means on that Discord are only people who really want to be there. And it's a very, very friendly community as well. So it's worth it. But... It is patron exclusive. <clears throat> there you go. Thank you. Thank you, Sammy. That's uh, one of my uh, Stinger NSW is one of my uh, patrons and he's he'll be joining me for the trip to the to United States to uh, uh, CRS 20 and to Boca Chica which is really, really cool. And uh, Warhawk is going to celebrate his birthday with us in Boca Chica, which is also really, really awesome. I'm very much looking forward to that. So um, you get involved when you, if you're a patron. That's another cool thing about that. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff going on there, of course. 8.5 means 8.5 bar. That's the pressure inside the tank that was reached. And... Uh, What's needed for a flight is 6 bar, and what SpaceX wants to have as a safety margin is 8.5. And the tank test yesterday reached 
the 8.5 bar mark, which basically means it's far more than what's needed for a flight. And it is it includes the safety margin that SpaceX wants. So basically, it, it could well be, and I'm really hoping for it, that they're done with uh, testing bulkheads and uh, tanks. Even though it was nice to watch them pop all the time, it's also good to have some results. And uh, it's the one thing that's missing until they finally start building Starship serial number one, which they're already at. Elon uh, posted on Twitter, and I've retweeted that, of course, uh, that they already have two bulkheads going and they're stacking rings in very small still, but they're already preparing parts for Starship serial number one. And um, Musk said that they have two bulkheads, and that basically means they figured out the bulkheads already. Otherwise, they wouldn't be building bulkheads for Starship Serial Number One that they're actually going to use. So that's a very, very good sign. But that's all going to be on tomorrow's episode, of course, and I'm spoiling the whole thing right now. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. They can technically go for a Starship build now, exactly. And it's a giant achievement, I agree. And it's, it's been done really quick as well. I actually, in, in my mind, I thought, oh, yeah, we're going to see a three to four month of uh, pressure test testing. But apparently it wasn't needed. Just two test tanks and they got it figured out. That would be really quick. <clears throat> of course I do know Perry Roden. Of course. Yep, launch is closing in. All right, uh, let me see if you've got if my moderators have picked some questions from you already so we can we can answer a few of those before we're getting busy with the launch. So let me just see what what the moder moderators are saying. Um <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, Thomas Gerhardt is asking, I know you saw the cryogenic liquid nitrogen test at Boca Chica. Thoughts on achieving 8.5? Yeah, we, I've, I've already had that now. Uh, I've answered the question. It was incredible. The <laughs> explosion was incredible. And it is incredible that SpaceX only needed two test tanks, basically, to figure out the 8.5 bar mark. So that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. And I'm, I'm really, really crossing my fingers that they're finally going to start building Starship Serial Number 1 because when I go to Boca Chica in early March, um, I want to see something, at least something. And, well, you, you always see something in Boca Chica, but it would be better if it was some sort of half-finished Starship or something like that. So I'm really crossing my fingers that they're going to start <laughs> building pretty soon. Okay, um... Greg Smith, does SL3 delay cause SL4 to be delayed? Um, mm, I don't know what you mean is with SL3. Could you elaborate, please, and write it as a question again? I'll answer it then. I don't know what you mean with SL3. Uh, Tim Hewitt Baker, um, uh, that was a German one. Uh, T but it's still Tim Hewitt Baker. Okay, uh, warum bist du in die Raumfahrtindustrie gekommen? War as durch astronomy okay so to, to to translate that into english why how did you get to the to to become a part of the space industry and was that related to astronomy first of all thanks for calling me a part of the space industry i could be calling myself more a uh, sort of an educator about space um and yes it is directly related to astronomy you see the yeah the the um, telescope in the background. It's not only related to astronomy, it's also just related to technology. I'm a huge fan of technology. That's the, the reason why the channel is called What About It? The Need for Knowledge is because initially I was planning to make it more a broader um, thing about everything high tech, including space, of course. But then I, I dipped into space first because that was the one that I'm interested in the most. And I found so many topics and I found so many people who want to watch content about space that I stuck with it, basically. And now I'm really happy that I did because um, it makes it a lot e easier to follow something close if you're not talking about uh, uh, all sorts of science topics at the same time. This, this way, 
specializing especially in spacex right now because that's the the thing that's going on everybody else takes a long time to to do to to show something new and spacex does that three times a week um so it makes it a lot easier to focus on a specific project like spacex right now and be really informed down to the detail which is a lot of fun so that's that's how it came to being spacex focused i'm not particularly a SpaceX fanboy, I'd say. It's just that SpaceX right now is doing a brilliant job with on so many levels that it is really hard to not have like 50 to 60% content on every episode about SpaceX because they're, they're doing stuff like two to three times a week and every time is amazing. Like yesterday we saw the, the pressure test um, that was incredible. Like look forward to episode uh, 69 tomorrow if you haven't seen it yet. And today we're going to have Starlink. And I'm, I'm pretty sure in the next few days we're going to have something new again. It's just it's just incredible. Yeah, but it is related to astronomy, of course. I'm a huge fan of astronomy and it is, in my opinion, it changes your view of, of, of space in general if you've seen it with your own eyes. I've talked to a lot of people who said, yeah, but you can just look at Hubble images. Yes, you can, and they are probably going to be much better than what that telescope can produce. But seeing it with your own eyes is always something different. It's like saying, yeah, I know I know how what it looks like when you pilot an airplane or when you've actually piloted an airplane. It's something different. And that's the same thing with, yeah, you know how Saturn, what Saturn looks like or uh, the greater Orion Nebula or, or the Sombrero Galaxy. Of course, we've, we've seen the pictures. But if you've seen it with your own eyes and you know it's up there right now in that moment when I look through that telescope, it's something different. So I, I always encourage people, if, if you've got the time and if you've got at least a little bit of money, get a telescope. It's, it's, it, it changes your view of space in general. It really does. Thanks for the question. Um, and you've got a lot of questions and I'm taking a lot of time to answer them again. Uh, Teshua is saying, will Starship be as sensitive to weather conditions? Uh, yes, uh, prob probably yes. It's just, uh, first of all, it's a safety precaution. So um, you don't launch through cumul cumulus clouds because there are a lot of things that can affect the rocket, including lightning strikes and all that kind of stuff. And you don't want to have that. Uh, wind is a general problem because it it forces the rocket to spend more fuel to correct the flight path up to a certain point where it can't even correct the flight path anymore, and so on and so forth. It's it, it, I, in my opinion the traditional rockets that we have right now with uh, chemical uh, 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 rocket motors on, on the bottom and the pointy end on top, as Tim always says, um, they're always going to be um, sensitive to weather. So yeah, probably yes. Um, <clears throat> Neutak. Oh, yeah, Felix, while we are at it, tell them to hit the like button. Yeah, all right. Uh, it's 1,099 people watching right now, and we have 335 likes. If you can make that go up, just click the like button. It helps a lot. It helps the channel to trend and show more people that the stream is going on. So if you like the stream and you want more people to see it, hit the like button. Thank you. Um, Peter Stoyanov is saying, Felix, what is your opinion on O'Neill cylinders and using Starship to build one? <laughs> Difficult topic. I, I was thinking about making an episode about that, so I wouldn't want to spoil that right now. Um, and it would take me like 10 minutes to answer the question in depth. So uh, thank you for the great question, but I'm, 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 I really want to do the episode about it and answer that in in, in in detail because it's it's a very complex topic as you might know so thank you very much for the question but you'll have to wait until the episode comes out thank you um swaggerino is saying what about it do you know the book series perry roden yeah i've answered that yes i do i knew i do know perry roden i've never read anything in the Perry, Perry Roden universe, but I know about it and I know that there's a big fan culture surrounding it. Um, I'm, I'm more of an Asimov fan, if that tells you anything. And uh, um, in general, right now, my time to read books is very, very limited. So my reading times were like, um, it basically stopped roughly like, I'd say 10 years ago already, oh, time's flying. Because I've been working so much and I've been doing so many other things like doing paramotoring and astronomy and all that kind of stuff limits my reading times. And so I do audiobooks, I watch a lot of YouTube documentaries, 
that that kind of stuff is is easier for consumption but before when i was still reading a lot and i did uh asimov was my thing to go to um zero tau was this 8.5 bar uh the bottleneck same as the previous test that didn't quite reach it um, 8.5 was the goal and they've reached it and that should in theory mean that they're gonna stop testing uh, tanks in theory um, and yes the weld quality in general is the bottleneck uh, Elon said that as well that um, you have to get the weld quality up everything else has been done by SpaceX even the super heavy a lot of people are saying that it's gonna be very difficult to build super heavy in general it isn't it's just a large Falcon 9 booster in general of course there it's bigger and you have to figure out how to arrange the the engines and all that kind of stuff but everything else basically the whole tank structure fuel supply how to control it in the atmosphere that's exactly going to be the same as on the falcon 9 booster so in theory uh that shouldn't be a problem welds 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 yeah he, ha he has to figure out a cheap and reliable way to make the welds as as good as strong as possible basically Um, Inri, Inri XSCG is asking, Felix, do you think one day you will fly in one of the starships? Yes, if it flies and if SpaceX does the point to point uh, travel on Earth, I'm definitely going to do the trip as soon as it's as it's reliable, as soon as it's proven on a number of flights that it can do the trick. I'm definitely gonna be sitting in one of them and trying it out it's it's i mean it's so amazing to maybe even actually have the ability to book a seat on a starship uh any any true space nerd who 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 um is not afraid is, is not too much afraid will probably do it uh, they'll they'll be able to book to to fill the first ten thousand starships just with fans probably so yeah i'm i'm definitely going to do it as soon as it's reliable and available at any price point that i can that i, that I can afford <clears throat> dendy caligis what make what makes the starlink v3 delayed for for a day um on monday we had uh upper upper level winds at 135 knots that is too much for the falcon 9 to course correct and so they they scrubbed it to tuesday and on tuesday we had rough sea in the recovery area so they scrubbed it to today and today everything so far I'm, i haven't checked and i'm i hope i really don't see anything negative now that i check no everything's still good um and today everything seems fine it's it's 80 percent favorable so that's pretty good so hopefully we'll see a launch today uh thomas gerard is asking did you hear about the newly proposed bill from the house yes i did uh oh, i'm sorry I'm, I'm i'm so upset about that thing that i didn't even finish a question it seems they want to push the moon mission to back to 2028 essentially canceling the artemis program well it's not canceled uh in that new bill everything all the artemis missions are in there one two and three um it's a very political topic and whenever this stuff comes up i'm i say that's uh what about it is not a political place it's just because i want to, to have people uh on my last episode i did an sls core update which isn't really political in my opinion because it was mainly focused on the rocket itself and i had so many comments and some of them clearly stepped over the line so um when tomorrow's episode comes out i even have that on the episode when you watch it and you do a comment keep it civil it's it's it, i i actually agree on a few of the points that were made on the last episode but the the, the tone makes the music i don't know if that uh, saying exists in english too it's a german saying i don't it could be logical uh, to, to to also exist in english but if you know what i mean uh just put it into the right words um and yes i, I i've heard of the bill and there's a, a half the tomo half of tomorrow's episode is about that bill because it is really important and i I think a lot of the points in there are wrong and I'm going to explain why in tomorrow's episode but uh know that I I'm I've got a strong opinion about that thing and uh it's the typical political circle it the whole course has been changed again and who knows what's going to happen in the next 8 years because possibly there are going to be two two more 
presidents in that time and they're going to change it again and again if if we have bad luck and that basically means they're never never going to reach the goal and that's the biggest problem i have that we have with that bill but everything else is going to be in tomorrow's episode so watch that um um thomas sand is asking uh as an astronomer tr astronomer are you worried about the starlink satellites have you seen any of them yet i haven't uh, because i've been very very busy with the channel but i've seen uh pictures and video footage footage of it i am not concerned even though i know that it's going to be trouble for astronomers especially for f uh, f um uh astrophotography uh, it's going to be a pain to have so many starlink satellites up there as soon as it's like forty thousand, it's going to be really really difficult to make pictures without the typical satellite stripe in it but it's it's um it's photography it's it's not science and in my opinion it is more important to fund the Starship program to get us to Mars with Starlink. That's one of the reasons why SpaceX is creating Starlink. And to give the whole world an opportunity to have uh, um, low latency broadband uh, internet all over the planet. That's going to change the world so much. Most people can't, can't even fathom how much, how much change that will bring. And in my opinion, that is just more important than um, uh, astrophotography. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I, I feel for the, for the photographers, but on the other hand, it is a very, very, very important project. And so I think, well, maybe use Photoshop to edit out the Starlink stripes, which is going to be possible and pretty easy actually to do. So, um, yeah, and be lucky that it doesn't go straight through the object that you were targeting. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I agree with those who say that it's going to ruin the night sky. It's probably going to do it. But on the other hand, it is very important. So good question. Thank you. <clears throat> Kasper, Kasper to heat blink. That was probably utterly wrong, but I still said it. Does the Starlink 3 launch delay the Starlink 4 launch? Okay, aha, okay, S, uh, SL3 and SL4. That's the, the uh, uh, elaboration on that. Um, it shouldn't no because it, they are far apart and it's just been a scrub of three days and the and the uh, satellite production runs in the background and spacex has enough boosters so it shouldn't no uh, and it's been just three days if it if it's like if it would be a month yes but just three days i don't think so no it, that should be really really strange if it would uh, Davy one, uh, make a video about the best telescope, please. I am planning to because I am already an official uh, Explore Scientific ambassador, which is an honor for me. They approached me. That's the sister company of Bressa, who built that telescope in the background uh, from the United States, and they approached me to become an official ambassador. And I'm definitely going to do a video about how to do the basics on a telescope. I'm gonna, it's a Newtonian, so I'm gonna explain that, but it's not that much different, diff different on many things when it comes to refractors. That's the, the telescope that, that has the traditional lenses behind, like, uh, like a spyglass, but just much better basically, and this is a Newtonian. But I'm gonna explain all of that <laughs> on the video, and I'm definitely gonna do one, yes. Um, how to align it, how to find your target if you don't have to have a go-to mount, all that kind of stuff. I'm definitely going to do an episode, but I'm going to do that earliest in spring because right now it is really, really cold out here in the night and it takes at least two hours to set up the telescope, align it and find your first objects and everything. And if you stood in the middle of the night somewhere on a mountain uh, uh, on, uh, at two in the morning uh, uh, for two hours, you're freezing if you're not uh, an Inu Inuit or something. And I'm not. So I do astronomy in spring, summer and fall. And that's when I'm going to do the episode because it just makes sense to do it outdoors, basically. So, yeah, it's a good question. Thank you. Um, let me just real quick check with SpaceX again if, if anything has changed or if I have to adjust anything while uh, still still good. All right, let me continue with the questions. Um, Enceladus, nice nice nickname. Felix, what if they use another te technique to build the tank? What about 3D printing or melt the steel and pour it? Uh, without complex welding wouldn't be more secure. There is a reason why SpaceX is building it the way they are building it right now. They want to have stainless steel uh, 
um, because stainless steel is is doubles its strength when it's cryogenic and is and is also stronger when it's heated up. So that's the two um, possible states that the Starship is in when it is launching and when it is in space. It, it, it will not be at room temperature at any point. And uh, that's where stainless steel excels. Also, stainless steel is a pretty good heat conductor, so that makes it easy, easy to, to basically ingest a lot of the heat and then get rid of it. Um, stainless steel is insanely cheap. And so stainless steel um, combines a lot of... Uh, very favorable uh, traits in one material. And that's the reason why SpaceX is trying it with stainless steel. 3D printing and especially uh, composite um, uh, carbon fiber materials are insanely expensive. So that uh, would be a problem. I think, st I think 3D printing wouldn't be stable enough either or very, very difficult to build something that big out of 3D printing, because the biggest 3D printers I've seen so far, they, they, they printed a boat, I think, but that thing had like six meter diame diameter and it would still be missing another three meters. So 3D printing a Starship hull, if you've got that big of a 3D printer, you should sell it. <laughs> I think the technology would be hard to get. And then, like I said, composite uh, uh, materials are way more expensive than stainless steel. And so that's the reason why they are trying to go with stainless steel and uh, let them try first. If they can manage to do it and they're getting better at it, that would be an insanely cheap, insanely quick, uh, and in theory, very reliable way of building a, a Starship hole. Don't, don't, don't get, uh, f uh, don't be fooled by what you saw last year. Um, I, I, I'm not even sure what we saw last year. If it really was just to build a prop for the, for the presentation, I don't, think so but it could be close to that they were just figuring out stuff all over the place and it's not i mean if anybody who's seen a falcon heavy launch knows that spacex knows how to build a rocket so don't be worried about that let them try to figure it out um i would be amazed if it worked this way and it would be a really really cheap way of building a starship so i'm all for the stainless steel right now let them let them try <clears throat> um there we go, uh, 3D printing. And Peter Frank Franklin is asking, Felix, what's your thought on the large explosive event as the tank ruptured? It appears the N2 uh, put the flames out fast, though. Flames? Uh, I, I, I watched the explosion, and I didn't see any flames going, especially because nitrogen is not flammable. And... Uh, I, I, there were really bright lights there, and one of them I think shot down when the when the nitrogen cloud hit it. But I wouldn't be I I wouldn't have seen any flames there. If anybody can confirm that, it was the big light. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought as well. So there weren't any flames involved because SpaceX obviously wouldn't use any gas that is flammable <laughs> for a pressure test where they where they expect it to burst because it was an overpressure event again. It turned orange, yeah, but that, I think that was the lights. <clears throat> yeah, Space Pony might be right there, exactly. So I don't think there was a, f a flame involved. That would be really strange. <laughs> okay, uh, Swiss Phantom. Do you think the Starship will, be ha will have names like the Space Shuttles did? I am hoping so. Or will they have only numbers? Uh, P.S. This is not... My question, thanks to Nathaniel Kenki for the question. All right, Nathaniel, um, you get the credit. Uh, I hope so. I hope they're going to come up with some sort of cool cool names uh, like uh, Heart of Gold or Enterprise or Nostromo <laughs> or whatever. Uh, I think the, the Starships, at least the crude ones and the first two or three ones, even if they're not crude, would deserve names. And I, I loved the tradition with the space shuttles. And I'm really hoping that SpaceX is going to do the same. Maybe not with the tankers and the cargo ships that, that USS Enterprise, exactly. Um, um, so I, I really, really hope that they're that they're gonna do that. Yes, it's a it was a lovely tradition, and I hope that they're gonna continue that. Good question, thank you, Nathaniel. Um, Safo Benjamin Kwabena, uh, will space travel be available to everyone? That's what Elon said uh, right after the in-flight abort test. He gave an interview, um, and he was talking about Starship, and he basically said that Starship is going to open up space for the for the average person. That means exactly that, and I. 
I'm that is that would be the biggest change basically the cost to go into space for anything for you or for a box of cargo would drop down to basically nothing compared to what it is today and that would would um, change our use of space right now highly expensive science missions and uh, the ISS and uh, stuff that we hand pick basically I'm sorry if that popped the microphone is chosen to go into space because it is so expensive if you have uh, a vehicle that brings up stuff into space for the price that Starship is going to do it it's 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 insane it's to, it's 20 bucks per kilogram I think if I remember it right and right now the cheapest way to go into space is 2500 roughly with a Falcon 9 so that would be the biggest change and I'm, I really hope that Starship's going to succeed exactly because of that not not on in the long run of course also because we could we might be able to colonize Mars and but we might be able to to do so many things with a Starship not only to colonize Mars imagine space-based telescopes uh, how how you could you wouldn't even have to bring one assembled space telescope into space you could just use 10 flights with a starship and assemble the thing in space if it's that cheap it's not a problem anymore and so on and so forth you could have space telescopes that fail because they weren't built in a clean room in a process that took 20 years because it is so cheap to launch them and so on and so forth so that that would be the most profound change that starship would bring i hope i didn't di divert from the question there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, will space travel be available to everyone? Yeah, hopefully, yes. Uh, Donan Zonan. Donan Zonan. Felix, what is your favorite sci fi universe? Yeah, I get that question a lot. It's like asking what's your favorite movie or what's your favorite song, uh, uh, Divine Allegiance. <laughs> um, uh, it, there's a close uh, race between um, Star Trek, of course. Star Wars, of course, but only the first three movies, basically. Maybe the the the, the second um, trilogy was good as well, partly. But the f first three are mine that I that I pick. And then uh, um, the Expands, I I really love that realistic approach to what how they show what the future could look like. That is a really nice one. But there are so many. I'm a. I can say in general that I'm a huge sci-fi fan. If you look into my shelf where I keep my Blu-rays, 50% uh, of them are sci-fi. So, hard pick. <laughs> Thanks for the question. And the streaming cat is showing up. I I I gotta close the door real quick. <laughs> Give me a sec. Because she knows how to open doors. She's a smart cat. Where's she now? There she is. All right. Um, I got a super chat, uh, Jean Noel again. Thank you very very much. Uh, good good test yesterday night or no? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm I'm really hoping because Elon said it's 8.5 bars. I'm really hoping that this seals that chapter of testing tanks. Even though it was fun to do, I I want to get them to 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 fly a starship. So yeah, thank you very much for the super chat again. As on Monday, super chat all the money you give me on today's stream is gonna go into my funding for the Florida trip because it's still pretty underfunded but I'm still gonna do it anyway and any money you give me today is gonna make that journey much more enjoyable <laughs> so thank you very very much for the super chat um what do we got countdown till the launch I could theoretically do that yes uh, give me a second uh, that would be 1506 my time let me see and this is going to be 1506. And I'm going to start that countdown, but I then I'll have to copy it still. Give me a second. Um, uh, I'll, I'll be right back. Don't be confused. I just got to copy it out of the other scene. One second. All right, here we are again. And I'm going to insert it in here. Haha, -ha, magic. And then I can put it here. So that should be the clock until the launch. And uh, in, in about 11 minutes, the stream from SpaceX should go. That was a good idea. Thank you. I should, I should do that every time, actually. Let me just real quick check SpaceX again. If there is anything. But there isn't. We're, we're still go. Very, very nice. <laughs> All right. We could definitely see a launch today, everybody. Cross your fingers. That would be 
that would be about time for this launch. <laughs> All right, uh, let me just real quick do, do a few more questions. I'm, I'm going to keep the rest of the questions for after the stream, so don't worry. But I'm going to try to do f a few more before we launch here. If anybody got, anybody's got a Starlink-related question uh, before the launch, do so. Um, because I'll, pick, I'll, I'll prioritize those for before the launch. Um, Federico, thank you very, very much for the super chat. Planning any call app for when you are in the States? Yes, it is a secret still, though. It is a very, very famous YouTuber who, have, who I've had contact with before. And he's asked me, he approached me, actually. But he doesn't know yet if he can make March, uh, if he can make it down to Boca Chica, where we would record together, which would be epic. And I would love that. But I'm like I said, I'm, it's still not official, so I'm not going to mention the name. You can guess if you want to. And it's not Everyday Astronaut. But he might be involved as well. But still, it's it's un, it's it's not unfinished stuff right now. So, but yeah, I'm I'm and Marcus House. I'm planning to do something with Marcus House, but that's not gonna be in uh, in Boca Chica, of course, because he's not gonna be there, which is a pity. If you if you can afford it, at one point, tell me, Marcus. Um, I'm I'm gonna I want to do this together with you. But we're we're gonna do a collaboration as well. And if you, if I pet her a little bit more, maybe you see her. Look at that. <laughs> it's the cat. It's the streaming cat as always. All right, she's sitting on my lap now. If you see if you hear her purr, tell me. <laughs> yeah, the cat's right here. We want the cat. Um no, it's not Scott I I've, I've interviewed Scott Manley before. Um that was a lot of fun at the ESA Open Days uh, last last fall. Uh he's a really decent guy. It was lots of fun to do the interview with him. But uh, he's a really, really busy guy. He's working a job and he's doing YouTube. So it is really hard to get a hold of him. And so a collaboration with him is really hard to do, actually. I'd love to, though. Definitely. He's a, he's a really good guy. And I'm not going to say who it is, so stop guessing. <laughs> Because it really isn't it, it really isn't official yet. So I don't want to be like, yeah, I'm going to do this and that. And then it's not going to happen. <clears throat> I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Everybody's guessing now. I shouldn't have mentioned that. Um, Starlink uh, broadband expansion in Germany. Um, hopefully, yes. Hopefully every, every st uh, broadband expansion in Germany is going to be obsolete with uh, Starlink. But I don't think so. Because uh, I am going to get my broadband expansion in Germany uh, next summer. And it's going to be a gigabit fiber connection into my cellar. So I don't think that Starlink is going to be covering that much bandwidth anytime soon. Even though the, the delay to the United States might be... Um, you stop guessing guys <laughs> even though the delay might be might be more i'm i don't care about that 50 millisecond thing so um <clears throat> but st the the starlink's going to have a lot of bandwidth and very very little latency and it's going to be about the same price as a normal provider which elon already said there might be a rent for the antenna on top but <clears throat> what's the countdown saying i'm getting kind of paranoid here missing the 26 minutes until until the broadcast goes live did i punch in the wrong time here for the for the countdown why is it saying 2021 <coughs> let me just check this real quick so here's 928 40 oh yeah i did put in the wrong time it's uh f it's 15:28 give me a second i co completely i punched in the time that the that the live stream would go live so this did you hear that yeah there you go that's the launch time i'm sorry i was kind of confused here so that's the launch time it should be 14:28 utc i hope so no, 1406 UTC. I'm 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 wrong again. 1406. So that is the that it was correct. Why is then the SpaceX stream saying that it is going to go live in 25 minutes? That would be after the launch. Guys, get your times right. You're confusing me. <laughs> so the SpaceX live stream is going to go live 5 minutes after liftoff. That's going to be a pity. <laughs> and you're still guessing. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna very much enjoy that gigabit gigabit connection, especially because of the all the YouTube stuff that I'm doing. It is I upload roughly 40 gigabytes per week, and right now I have a bit more than 50 mbits downstream and a bit less than 10 mbits upstream if that tells you anything and 50 gigabytes upload is very very slow with 10 mbits upstream so um, <laughs> i'm very much looking forward to that yes that is going to be really really nice let me just check uh, twitter again if there's anything new <clears throat> no there's not and i'm always scared when i'm reading now targeting but that's a different tweet from yesterday lucky luckily so we still go and Yep, the launch is going to be at 1406, 14, 1406 UTC. So I'm correct with the clock now, but the, the SpaceX stream says 23 minutes. So I don't know. <clears throat> I am uh, next to Adenau, uh, Nürburgring. Uh, so about in the middle of Germany. If anybody knows anything about the launch time or the timer being incorrect, tell me. I'm super confused right now that SpaceX's stream is supposed to go online in 23 minutes. It's just probably, yeah, and even here it, it says it, 14.09. It says 14.09 under the stream and it says 14.06 on the official tweet. What's the matter with you guys? Yeah, SpaceX seems, stream says 1409, exactly. But, and I agree, we should all adopt UTC. I'm a big fan of that. Pilots only use UTC, and it's a glory. It makes it so much easier. Um, but the tweet 56 minutes ago from SpaceX says 1406. So who's who's got it wrong, SpaceX or SpaceX? <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> they got all the times messed up this time, probably because of all the scrubs that were going on already. They're all confused. Um, let me double check that real quick. And it still says 14.06 on Wednesday. And under the stream, it says 14.09. So we'll just keep a close watch on everything, basically. To not miss it. But my, my latest information was 1406, and that would make sense as well. Let me just check. Maybe we can we can extrapolate that from Monday's launch window. That was on the 27th. That was 28. Then they targeted. Does anybody still know what they targeted on Tuesday? Because then we could possibly extrapolate how much is being shifted every day. Because that should be a very similar time window. Did any does anybody know? Five and five minutes. Yep. Yep. UTC is the same as GMT. And like I said, keep asking your questions. I'm gonna answer them after the after the uh, the whole launch has gone um, has unfolded. Fourteen oh six. Yep. SpaceX is live now. Well, it doesn't look like it to me. I don't see anything live. Let me just double check here. Yeah, well, it says live, but it isn't. Targeting Wednesday, 9.06. Yeah, and under the stream it says 9.09. Still no image, exactly. There is no image, no nothing yet. We'll we'll just keep a close watch on what SpaceX is planning to do here. Because it is not clear right now. What does the forecast say for the weather? For the for the there is no precise launch window in there. Did NASA tweet anything about it? They probably did. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And it's the solar orbiter, which is going to be really, really cool as well. Hmm. 
Hmm. Series 20 mission. Which I'm not going to be able to attend, which I hate. If anybody from NASA is watching this, it is a shame that you only let people from the United States attend your... Um, ah, I heard something. Just give me a second to mute this thing. Ah, uh, it's doing something. All right, all right, we're getting there. Uh, Night Fox, thank you very much for the super chat. Have fun in Florida. You should come to Japan next. I should definitely. I'm, I've never been to Asia in general. Thank you very much for the for the super chat. So the SpaceX stream is live, and I'm gonna put it into the corner here. Let's just give me a second. You should be able to hear it already. Should should should. Um. All right, there we go. That's the stream. I'm wondering why you can't hear anything here. Give me a second. I'm just checking something. That is rather strange. Uh, could anybody confirm if you can hear any audio from the... I can definitely hear it here. It looks like you can't hear it on the stream though, and I don't know why. I hate this streaming software. Uh, they... Yeah, I'm through the speakers, I'm sorry. There we go. Yep, the, the audio is there. I figured it out. <clears throat> Yep, that's the, the the music from the from the live stream from SpaceX's live. That was a different uh, a device set up here. Thomas Bennigan, thank you very much. Cool sticker. Thank you very much for the super chat. Like I said, everything everything you you uh, give in super chats tonight is gonna go um, to the to the Florida trip, um, and it's gonna make the journey more enjoyable for me because the funding is limited of course small channel and such but i really wanted to do the trip especially also to boca chica which is another flight i had to book so it's a pretty expensive thing <clears throat> all right Still figuring out the software here after the fifth stream. This is amazing. Where do I shut up my? Thanks for the super chats. Launch for cookie. Uh, lunch for cookie. Yeah, she's sleeping on my lab. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Bill, thank you very much. Happy Florida trip. SpaceX is killing Blue Origin. No orbital launches yet. Yeah, well, but Blue Origin is building a lot of infrastructure. So, um, and Anthony, thanks for the sticker. Number one fan. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. That is super cool of you. Um, still trying to figure out how to set up my monitor monitoring device here which was correctly set up I'm, I totally don't know why I switched that What is going on here? Um, 
Well, as long as you can hear everything and the stream's going. Very nice. So that's the typical introduction we always get. Ha! There we go. a.m. Eastern on January 29th, and you are looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 as it awaits its target at 9.07 a.m. Eastern Time launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Good morning from SpaceX mm. headquarters here in Hawthorne, California. My name is Lauren Lyons, and I'm an engineer on our Starlink team here at SpaceX, and welcome to our live webcast of our fourth that Starlink mission. Today strange. we have launched and three satellites of 60 Star sorry, three sets of 60 Starlink satellites. One set back in May of 2019, another in November, mm. and the most recent just a few weeks ago on January 6th. This network Just of give me a second, I'm trying to figure it out. Satellites is designed to bring high speed uh, but I'm not able to. internet to people all over the globe. By design, these satellites will be able to service areas of the globe where connectivity has been unreliable, too expensive, or completely unavailable. For those of you who follow SpaceX closely, you know we successfully completed an in-flight demonstration of our Crew hmm. Dragon launch escape system about a week and a half ago on January 19th. This test was the last major milestone before we fly NASA astronauts to the space station for the first time on our Crew Dragon spacecraft later this year. This is the mission known as Demo 2. I should be correct. The rocket you Just see give on your screen one right there also played a role in these efforts. Specifically, this booster previously launched the first Crew here. Dragon spacecraft, minus the astronauts, of course, because and launched it to the International Space Station for NASA back in March of last year. This was a mission known as Demo 1. Now today we're going to attempt to recover this Falcon 9 first stage for the third time. This time on the problem ship, here course, going on because it's currently stationed about 350 nautical miles off the eastern coast of Florida. We'll be attempting to recover. We'll also be attempting to recover both fairing pay, payload fairing halves today during our fair, uh, using our two fairing stupid. recovery vessels, Miss Tree and Miss Chief. Woo. So we likely won't see those views live. Yeah. So we're continuing to count down to liftoff, but if for some reason we have to call a hold on today's launch, no, we do have a backup stupid. opportunity on Thursday, January 30th at 8.45 a.m. Eastern. But at this time, all systems are go for an on-time liftoff. My name is Jesse Anderson, and I'm a lead manufacturing engineer here at SpaceX. Right now, we are looking at a live view of Falcon 9 on our pad. Uh, the problem I'm having is that I can't in Cape Canaveral, hear Florida. Falcon what SpaceX is saying, and if I turn it on, it's fully fueled, you can't hear what SpaceX is saying. A million and vice versa, I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit so you can actually three minutes after liftoff. hear it. And then I'm we prep Falcon 9 for launch in our hangar at the base of the pad, and upon completing final checkouts, Falcon 9 rolled out to the pad with the Starlink payload and went vertical early this morning. The chief engineer held a technical poll at T minus one hour to confirm no significant issues, and launch director held a propellant load and launch go no go poll at T minus 38 minutes to ensure all teams were good to begin the fueling process. Falcon 9 has been loading propellants since T minus 35 minutes, and currently our rocket grade kerosene, or RP1, is nearly fully loaded on the first stage, which is the bottom two thirds of the vehicle that you see there on your screen. That first stage, which previously flew during SpaceX's Demo-1 mission for NASA, as well as the Radar Sat Constellation mission in June of 2019, is responsible for accelerating the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to the edge of space with the help of nine Merlin engines. Above that first stage is the second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum, or MVAC engine, which ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the Starlink satellites to an altitude of 290 kilometers above the Earth's surface. At this time, second stage is fully fueled and liquid oxygen loading is currently underway on both first and second stage. The stack of 60 satellites is safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which is the pointed enclosure on the very top of the rocket. And we've got a nice view of the uh, satellites stacked up right there. The, these are flat satellites, so you can see that there on your screen. And once we reach the vacuum of space, we will deploy the fairing as the second stage mm -hmm. continues on its journey to uh -huh. its final orbit. 
So far, weather is looking good during our launch window for an on-time launch, but we'll be keeping an eye on, the, on this all the way down to T minus zero. The Air Force range is prepared to support today's mission. Waters are clear of any ships and the range continues to ensure the safety of our launch. The vehicle, satellites, weather, and range are all looking good for an on-time liftoff just a few minutes from now. Today, most of your satellite internet services come from geostationary satellites or geosats. A single geosat will serve a fixed but broad area and is typically placed about 35,000 kilometers or higher above the Earth. Now, one of the main drawbacks of that high altitude is high latency or delay in that signal that's provided because they're so far above the Earth. Starlink, on the other hand, is a constellation of multiple satellites that orbit the planet, but at much lower, at about 550 kilometers. Because of this low orbit, latency is much lower than with satellites in geostationary orbit. This enables Starlink to deliver services like seamless video calls that are usually not possible on other satellite internet systems. And because Starlink satellites fly in a global constellation, we can bring high-speed internet to places that previously had terrible service or no service at all. Some of the most exciting opportunities for Starlink are rural or remote locations where traditional fiber or cable just isn't practical. And Starlink can also deliver high-speed internet to locations where fiber and cable aren't possible at all, such as a cruise ship or an airplane. Building a constellation that can provide this level of service is incredibly challenging, but we are making steady progress towards that goal with every Starlink launch. And one quick note, during our last launch, we mentioned that we were experimenting with a darkening treatment on one of our satellites. This is part of an effort to minimize reflections from the satellites that may be distracting to some astronomers during their observations of the night sky. It takes a few weeks for those satellites to reach their final orbit destination, so we don't have the results of that dark sat experiment just yet, but we'll be sure to share what we've learned as the data becomes available. We are currently a little bit over four minutes from liftoff, and Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. At T minus seven minutes, engine chill began. This is where we allow a small amount of the super chilled liquid oxygen to flow into the Merlin turbo pumps prior to the full flow of liquid oxygen into the vehicle, and that's to avoid any shocks to the system. Liquid oxygen is also what's creating the white puffs around Falcon 9. We continue to load super chilled liquid oxygen, or LOX, into the stage until just before liftoff, and when that super chilled LOX comes in contact with the ambient air around it, it creates those white clouds surrounding the vehicle that you can see there on your screen. And just a few moments ago, around T minus four and a half minutes, the transporter erector retracted away from the rocket slightly, and this provides clearance for Falcon 9 to lift off. The first and second stages are both nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. First stage should finish prop loading at T minus three minutes, and second stage at T minus two minutes. At T minus 60 seconds, be sure to listen in to the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. This booster has launched from our 39A launch pad, our Vandenberg launch pad, and it is now getting ready for liftoff from our Slick 40 launch pad today. The Starlink payload continues to be healthy. The Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is still looking good, and the range is green for launch. So let's listen in to the last few minutes of the countdown. All right, this looks very, very, very promising here. It might actually be a launch today, which would be epic. Two more, two, two minutes and 30 on my screen. Very, very nice. Look at all the venting going on and it's just, it's just amazing every time again. The Falcon 9 is a beautiful rocket. How the whole thing comes alive. It's always amazing every time. Love it. And we got a launch today. We get a launch. You're very welcome. And thank, thank you all for showing up. This is just, it's a 1300 people watching this with me right now. It's just amazing. Stage two lost, loads closed up. Loads are closed up. So the, uh, 
second stage is liquid oxygen fueling has has been topped off now. Ground gas close out starting. Look at that thing. One minute and twenty. Here we go. Lovely shots again. And there's 60 Starlings set up. Falcon 9, start up. Yep. There we go, Grass start up. Complete. Ah, countdown was jumping for a second. LDs go for launch. SpaceX has trouble with the times today, right? All right, 30 more seconds. You T minus go. 30 seconds. And in March, I'm gonna see that live. You know, on a night launch, it's gonna be incredible. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off. Yes. <laughs> Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is normal. Looking good. That there was a bit of venting still going on after launch. It and is T plus 45 seconds, and we've cloud. just had a nominal liftoff yeah. of our Falcon 9 vehicle carrying our Starlink payload on its way to its targeted orbit. Probably In just about 20 right seconds coming up here, we will be passing through max Q. Falcon 9 is supersonic. That is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle will see, which is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees yeah. throughout ascent. SpaceX rocks, definitely. Vehicle is experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. No, it's We've not. just heard that call out from Max Q. <clears throat> Coming go. up next in about a minute will be three events back to back, starting off with Miko or main engine cutoff, followed immediately by stage separation, and this is where the first stage separates from the second stage, and then followed by SES 1, which is second engine startup. MVEC engine chill. How high up it already we is. We should it's be able to see all three of those events live on your screen. But right now we've got an awesome view looking aft on the vehicle with the earth in the background. Amazing. Now, if you're just now joining us, we're about 30 seconds away from Miko main engine cutoff, stage separation and SES one or second engine start one. And imagine seeing something like that for yourself when sitting in a starship or something because earlier I had the question if I would do a trip on a starship yeah for that definitely there we go there's Shut that down. main engine cut off engine cut off stage separation confirmed nice all right Let's see the stage separation. First stage separating from second stage on your left screen. And on the right, second engine startup. Yep, That's that go. MVAC engine on our second stage. And there's that bright red glow on the engine. Uh, and there you can see the heartbeat. So again. now coming up in about 20 seconds is fairing deploy. And as Lauren mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to catch both payload fairing halves on our recovery vessels, Miss Tree and Miss Chief. We 
will un it will be unlikely that we will see these live on the webcast. So we'll bring you updates as they become available. But you can also check into our social media for updates as I well. Should fair. Separation confirmed. That's and there's that call there. out for fairing separation. There we there's go. fairing, fairing deploy. You can see that on your right screen. Those fairing halves are now are. making, you can see that on your screen actually, the fairing halves are making their way back to Earth and hopefully we can catch those on our recovery <laughs> vessels. No, you won't. Still, it's going to be amazing to look out the window in the Starship when you're going up. So, if you can, and I hope you can. Yep, the, the fairings are on the way back down again. And for those who are wondering what that pumping on the right side where you see the second stage engine, you see the foil, uh, it looks like a heartbeat. And that is the RCS, the course correction system that basically fires these really small bursts to, to correct the course. And it looks like a heartbeat. And I always love that every time it hey, looks like Bermuda. it's alive. Okay, so we have on both sides of your screen here, we got stage one on the left and stage two on the right. So a lot of really cool stuff coming up all at once or in rapid succession here in the next few minutes. On the left side, what we're gonna see on the stage one side of things is at about T plus six minutes and 24 seconds, more or less, you're gonna hear the call out and hopefully visually see the stage one entry burn. That's where we reignite three of those uh, Merlin 1D engines and that allows the second, sorry, the first stage to slow down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's stage atmosphere. Stage two is on a nominal trajectory. All right, as you just heard, stage two is on a nominal trajectory. That's really cool. Meanwhile, stage one is coasting down, uh, getting ready for that entry burn. That burn's gonna last just under 20 seconds. After that entry burn, stage one will continue to coast down towards the drone ship. And at about T plus eight minutes or so, you're gonna hear the call out for the landing burn. That is where we reignite a single Merlin 1D engine, that center engine E9, and that slows the vehicle down to zero velocity. And hopefully you'll see a cool image of it standing right up on the drone ship. Meanwhile, stage two continues to perform nominally, so we're wearing that MVAC an is at full, full power. And somebody had the question. Now, um, right after the stage one landing, about 20 seconds later, you're gonna hear the call out for Seco 1, that second engine cutoff one. That is where we cease to burn the second stage engine and takes us into our first coast phase. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to turn the volume down here uh, real quick. Um, somebody had the question of how... how um, stage two engine is burning with more than 200,000 pounds of thrust as it takes that stack of 60 Starlink satellites to its first parking orbit. There comes the re-entry burn. Stage one entry start up. All right, you see that entry burn as it nice. started. Ah. So we lost the image, but hopefully it'll come back. That entry burn was just under 20 seconds long. Meanwhile, stage two, stage as you can see. Entry shut down. Stage right. two continues to burn, and we just heard the call out that the entry burn on stage one has concluded. That looks like a perfect mission so far. Um, somebody had the question of how heavy the fairings are. That's actually a pretty good question, but... Stage two continues on a nominal trajectory. Nice. I couldn't honestly answer, answer that, but I think it is a really nice question. So if anybody has uh, numbers on that, put it in the chat. I'd be so interested as well. a little bit under uh, a minute from the landing burn start. Meanwhile, stage two, as you just heard, continues on a nominal trajectory. Stage one, transonic. 30 pounds? <laughs> Must be more than that. <laughs> okay, in just under 15 seconds, stage one should start that landing burn. Yeah, that's that sounds more realistic. Hopefully stage we'll one get landing start up. Back. 250, yep. And it's B1051's third flight. That's correct. It's uh, 
It was on. Uh, Right, that landing burn is currently going. Um, Unfortunately, Stinger, we don't have the NSW. video from the vehicle, but we do have the drone Stage one video. landing light deployed. Stage two is in terminal guidance. There we go. All right, and yes. Awesome. That's the third landing of this booster. Second time landing on, of course, I Still Love You. Chopper 9 has landed. Operators, please proceed. Very to cool. And safe. any second now, we should be seeing Seco 1. That is where that second stage nice. engine will cut off. Very nice image. But did that look rough? I thought that was kind of rough. But they did it anyway. Got that animation there, but... Let's still listen out for the call. Perfect, done. Very nice. All right. All right. Now we're going to enter. Heard, second engine shut down. Oh, escape First protected. coast phase. And we got confirmation that we're in a good orbit. Nice. All right. So we're now going to enter a coast phase. So we're going to take a quick break. Orbit but insertion. we'll be leaving you with an animation that shows where we are in the coast phase. And we'll be back at about T plus 45 minutes for a second stage relight, followed by another brief coast and then payload deploy. Hopefully we'll be able to bring you that payload deploy live on the webcast. So we'll see you back here in just over 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna turn down the volume here real, real quick, a little bit. And take off these, because I hate wearing, wearing these. All right, uh, what we just saw basically was a perfect execution of a, of a Starlink mission so far. Um, orbit achieved, first first coast phase reached, and uh, in as she said, about 35 minutes we're going to see a second burn of the upper stage to to reach the deploy orbit, which is not far after that because deployment is an, about an hour after launch, and if they reach the if they at the first coast phase ends after 45 minutes after launch, so it's another t 15 minutes only um, for the transfer. And look at these pictures. That's awesome. All right, yeah, that that was just perfect. Uh, we had the question about the about the fairing halves, about the weight of the fairing halves, and somebody said 250 per set, and that sounds pretty realistic to me. I don't think it's going to be much more than that. Yeah, I I agree, uh, uh, Teshua. I think I think that landing was pretty rough, in my opinion. Um, it didn't look as soft as normally, but it it looked it looked like it was soft enough at least. And the the legs have crush blocks, so that's that's what they're for. <clears throat> if if the engines didn't p touch the boat, everything's fine, basically, because that's the expensive part. Besides the grid fins, but they are further up. <laughs> Nose could be squashed. All right, Mr. Anderson is saying that was a beautiful landing. I, th I thought it looked a bit rough, but I could be wrong too. It might be actually because the picture was so good. The video feed this time from the barge was perfect. Normally it always cuts off and is choppy and it's really hard to at all see a, a barge landing in one piece. And we just saw, so that's a pretty rare thing. And uh, that could well be that that's the reason. But I, th I thought it looked rough. Not too rough, though. Not not a problem rough. Yeah, I could I could show the landing again. That's actually a pretty good pretty good idea. Let me do that real quick. Let me just go back to where the landing was, and there it is. Hmm. It's really hard to tell because you can't normally see the. The, the barge landings like this was super smooth footage. Very nice done. Whatever they changed, they should keep that up. Calm sea as well. Not that many clouds. Everything's fine. I, I, it's hard. I could, I could be wrong. And I could just be... It didn't look perfect, at least. But it was really, really nice. Nonetheless, everything's fine. The legs, the legs did their job and uh, the rocket did a fine landing nonetheless definitely but it's also it's also slided slightly to the right as you can see it, it did this little hop see that when it comes down you can see it even does a slight hop to the right like, 
but still it qualifies as a decent landing considering that nobody else does this except for SpaceX. So uh, that's good enough for me. I'm gonna go back to live here. Um, yeah, like I said, that's good enough for me because any landing is a good landing. Exactly, Jim. Thank you for that. Um, it's it's the it's the only company that does this stuff. Um, that was not debris. Who's talking about debris? That's ice. If you can, if you see anything falling off the rocket in orbit, that is ice. If the barge uses Starlink internet, it, mm, mm, it it will probably in the future. <clears throat> could be also already doing it now but nobody knows there's not no official news on that but that would be the perfect scenario for uh starlink use definitely thank you martin it does a quick squat because it's tired exactly nominal landing yeah exactly that's what i'd say too even though it did this slight slight slide to the right and all that kind of stuff it, it still is a nominal landing because the rocket is undamaged it arrived on the barge and it's it, it's most likely going to be reused for a fourth time which is always incredible it's really really nice exactly yeah yeah i know i know it usually does a, a small jump well, it's hard. Uh, 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 it's hard to to say for me, honestly, because I've never seen such a good video feed from the barge before. I think it's always cutting off, or at least pixelated, or or uh, uh, a, a picture slideshow. And this time, it just it was perfectly stable. That is really really cool. So you could see all the little hops and slides and whatever. Like I said, though, it I I have to agree. It's a nominal landing, and uh, the rocket's gonna be reused. Uh, and uh, that's that's the whole purpose of the landing to to make to to recover the rocket undamaged, and that's what it did. So basically, it's a nominal landing. I I, I gotta agree. Was it all right? I don't remember that one. Oh, yeah, I don't remember that one because I didn't watch it live because I had the cold. I wanted to watch. I wanted to stream the last Starlink launch. But I got a really, really bad cold. And I stayed in bed, which wasn't nice at all. Must be more than, than 250. Yeah, they are huge, but they're optimized for, for low weight. So, I, I, in my opinion, 250 sounds, sounds reasonable. You saw a night launch, yeah. I'm, uh, CRS-20 is going to be a night launch. It's going to be th one, 1 in the morning, past 1 in the morning. And that's my first rocket launch life ever. And I'm going to so enjoy that. In, in uh, March 2nd is when it's going to be. So there's not going to be a live stream from me on March 2nd for CRS-20. Because I it's the first launch that I'm attending live. And I don't want to be busy... Um, setting up equipment, maybe getting it wrong because it's the first time I would do a stream from somewhere. I, I'm, I want to enjoy this launch, so I'm gonna, I'm just going to point a camera at it and not even look through the screen. I'm going to watch it with my own eyes. So there is not going to be a live stream from me of CRS-20. There might be live streams from me from Kennedy Space Center. I'm, just, I'm still trying to figure out what's the best way to live stream on the go. Saying anything? Not really. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what's the best way to live stream on the go. So um, if I find a good way, uh, I'm researching a few right now. I'm going to do live streams from Kennedy Space Center and Boca Chica, but I'm not going to live stream that launch. I'm, I'm so looking forward to it. SLS is pork. Don't say that. Orange rocket good. I I'm it's gonna pass directly over us the second stage, but it is daytime over here, so you can't see it. It it would be hard to see it at night. You can, but it uh, it needs precise aiming, and you need to you need to know where where to look. Yeah, but that thing's basically directly gonna pass over my head, like literally. The, if you look at the flight path, I'm directly on it. <laughs> hey, SpaceX, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's directly above me, basically. That's cool. 
But it's daytime, it's bright daylight over here, so I, I won't be able to see it. And I'm not gonna run outside to look, either. Hey Niklas, thanks for joining. Get a Netgear MR1100 or MR20 and put what you seem to you seem to know uh, your stuff. Could you send me an email uh, about that? Uh, what about it? Dot contact at gmail dot com because I, I I would need some advice on hardware and what to use when when on, in the field because I haven't done any field streams yet if you could call it that and. Uh, uh, I'm versatile with tech, but I've never done any any streaming from somewhere else. I'd know how to do it from a phone, but I really don't. I'd rather try something better. So, especially in Boca Chica. <laughs> I know, I know, this is. It's 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 just, it's such a political topic, and I I, I agree on a lot of the points. Um, especially on the Congress changing everything now, it's going to be a major topic on tomorrow's episode, like I said. And uh, but keep keep it civil in the comments. Don't be all um, conspiracy theory and all that kind of stuff. Should should stay out the door, in my opinion. But yeah, I gotta agree. There's a lot of mess up in that, and uh, it's hard to get it right. Though there are so many different parties involved and so many different people with with interests that are widely different from getting a rocket to the moon uh, that it is hard to to get it right it really is that's that's the biggest benefit spacex has they can just focus on a goal develop the necessary stuff and do it and that makes it as you can obviously see it makes it easier there we go a little more and it'll be up above my head that's funny uk you gotta look out the window and wave <laughs> it's pretty cool. And it took it 20 minutes to cross the pond, just to ra remind you how, how fast that thing is traveling. And uh, when I'm stepping into the plane, I'll, it'll take me six hours to get to Orlando. And that second stage is just racing across the globe right now. That's pretty good. There you go, maybe I can see myself. That should be the UK down there. It's really hard to make it out, though. That's funny. Yeah, very, very cool. Looks like a perfect mission so far. 20 more minutes to go, uh, or 20, 23 minutes to go until the coast phase ends. And then we should see the insurgent burn and then we should see the separation. 60 more Starlink satellites in orbit. It's, it's just, it's just mind blowing how, how quick they expand that uh, constellation is just SpaceX. What can you say? Yeah, and it's cloudy over here as well. I think at least it's hard to tell because I have curtains on the way. What is this it's really small hole? That I can, that, that it's not a hole, it's between the curtains that I can look through. And it looks like it's not cloudy over here. Well, as bright daylight. As you can see in the picture, it's too, too bright. Won't be able to see it. Alright, it's getting closer to me. Above the Netherlands now, or Belgium. Could be Belgium. It's gonna... And I can tell you where I live. <laughs> that is funny. It's just going right above my head, basically. So roughly, that's where I live. Where it is right now, that is where I live. If you, oh, like the line on the ground, not the dot, the line on the ground. So it's literally passing above my head right now. So that's that's where you get the stream from right now. That's the stage. The second stage is right above my head right now. That is pretty cool. There you go. It's down there. Oh, there's there's clouds there, but uh, there are no clouds where I am right now. So that must be one of those cloud holes. Oh, thank Mr. Dave. Thank you for the super chat. That is much appreciated. 
Yeah, and I'm looking forward to... Oh, that's Dave Lavoie, right? Hey, Dave! Um, I'm so looking forward to meeting you. Um, I'm t tomorrow's episode, I'm going to have a lot of info on the, on the meetup planned in Florida. And... Uh, yeah, let's make it happen. There are uh, quite a few. Julia Bergeron has already said that she's going to show up. And uh, maybe John Winkop's going to be there. So that should be an awesome, awesome thing to just meet people who are involved in the in the community a lot. And uh, so, yeah, show up. And I hope that many, many more from Florida, maybe people who are watching right now, just get to that restaurant. It's going to be on tomorrow's episode with an address and everything. Get to the restaurant and have a drink with me. I would enjoy that, like wholeheartedly enjoy that. So if you've got the time and if it's not too far away from you, make the trip and uh, we'll have a drink together. That would be awesome. Seriously, that would be that would be the like we Germans. I don't. It's with a lot of German sayings. I don't know if they exist in English though. There is a German saying saying that is the dot on the eye. That is the thing that finishes it, and that's the 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 community meetup on the 29th. It's just that thing that I I was that I wanted to do for a long time because I have got a lot of American viewers, and uh, I'd love to meet them. So if you if you if you can make it, come over either in Florida or Boca Chica. Dates for Boca Chica will be released later, hopefully within the next week or so, because we're still figuring out the restaurant, the place that we're gonna do it. It's gonna be South Padre though, pretty sure, or Brownsville, but I think South Padre would be the more beautiful place to to do it at. So yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be Greece. It's, it's above Turkey right now, I guess. No. Uh, it's it's Greece still, and it is going to be Turkey soon. Yeah, so that thing's traveling. Um, let me just check something real quick here. Yep. All right, yeah, so um, let me just switch back to so I can actually see what you're writing. Okay, um, I'm, I said I'm not going to skip any questions, so I'm going to con continue with questions right now while there's nothing happening that have been posted earlier. I hope the people are still there, and if not, I hope the people that are there right now enjoy the questions. Um, all right, I replayed the landing already. We've done that. Um, All right, uh, I'm seriously trying to not skip any questions here, so I'm reading the ones on top, so it uh, does. Okay, uh, Roman Polaski is asking, <laughs> nice Nick, does the dragon have the ability to land on the hard ground and does the Boeing capsule have the ability to land on the ocean? Uh, the Boeing capsule has the ability to land on the ocean because it's got airbags, airbags under it and that would keep it afloat. <clears throat> but the dragon does not anymore have the ability to land on the land as it is right now. Uh, the Super Dracos that were initially planned to do some sort of propulsive landing have been cancelled by NASA. And uh, in the version it is in right now, it wouldn't be able to do that anymore. So, no. Uh, <clears throat> and the reason for SpaceX not going for a, a, a land recovery is because initially it was it was planned for the land recovery and then they had to change a lot of stuff uh, because NASA didn't want the propulsive landing and but since the dragon the crew dragon capsule was already so far ahead they had to change a lot they would have had to change even more things if they would have wanted to go with us uh, uh, with a um, Starliner approach so they chose to do it on the water because that's the easiest way you just have to seal the major systems because the capsule of course is airtight anyway and uh, you have to seal the major systems so it doesn't get corroded no salt water gets in and that's basically it you can just recover the capsule and that's what they're doing and that's the reason why spacex chose to go with water and why the starliner is going on land because they initially had a different system and nasa said yep that's a good system and on the spacex system nasa said nope that's not a good system and so that's the the whole reason behind it basically 
Um, I've got more super chats. Every anybody, if if I've missed anybody on these super chats, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for the super chats. They are gonna go into my funding for the CRS20 trip, and any money I receive today is gonna make that journey much more enjoyable because the funding is limited. But so thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna try to read some of those live stream using microwave. Not sure of your budget, but this is something we use in remote cryptocurrency mining operations low latency weather resistance legacy technology but very stable <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's funny thank you very much um uh niklas thank you for the for the super chat i am i am planning meetups in germany as well I've, i'm already in talks with uh, community members who would actually help me do this and it would be somewhere around the rhineland region because that's the most densely populated area and it isn't too far away from me so and it is close to the benelux uh, countries like Netherlands, Belgium, and even France is pretty close. The people from England does, don't have to have to travel too far if they want to attend it and so on, so on and so forth. So that's probably going to be the general area. And I don't know when yet because this year is so insanely busy right now. I'm going to do the Florida trip I'm, on, on February 7th to 8th. I'm going to be at ESA watching the Solar Orbiter launch uh, at the ESA uh, Mission Control uh, room which is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna visit Copenhagen suborbitals. I'm gonna hopefully see Skylar. I'm gonna have an interview with them anyway, but I'm hopefully even gonna see their assembly facility in Scotland and all that kind of stuff. And so I'll have to arrange a little bit when to do that meetup. But I'm I'm definitely planning to do one. Of course, I'm living here, so it's the easiest meetup to do. And uh, so as soon as I've uh, got any plans that are more developed than I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna let you know, no, but I, I will definitely. Thank you for the super chat again. That's very, very nice of you. All right, let me continue with a few more questions here. Um, Steven Hartzmann uh, did a super chat. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Wäre ein Crew Dragon Hanger in Starship eine gu gute Lifeboat Option? Mach weiter so, Super Channel. Alright, uh, he said, uh, would a Crew Dragon Hanger in the Starship be a good lifeboat option? Uh, well, not for a launch aboard, because the Crew Dragon would have to escape the, the hangar on the Starship, which is insanely hard to do. You would have to add a lot of equipment to make that happen, and it would have to escape sideways too which makes it much more difficult so i don't think so maybe for in space but in space i don't know if you need uh that would be an, a space mission abort system and that has never existed so in th uh, uh, probably not I'm, I'm sorry to say that but it would be very very difficult technically engineering wise to make a crew dragon escape a launching starship <sighs> For for in space it would be, but then it wouldn't make any sense because the, the 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 crew dragon is pretty heavy, and it would take away a lot of the of the um, available um, uh, uh, cargo space, uh, and I don't know if that's worth it. If you already have a starship that's perfectly working in space, <clears throat> I I don't know. But thank you very very much for for the super chat and for the compliment. That is very nice of you. Thank you, Jeff James. Super chat, thanks for everything you're doing. Great work. Uh, when you do your vid on James W. Uh, uh, James Webb Space Telescope, I'm sorry, I'm, I was uh, spelling and saying at the same time. Can you get a straight answer, if possible, around James uh, about about JWST spectroscopy of exoatmospheres, please? Yes, I can probably, and I've already written that in the chat um, because Ryan. The Martian colonist is exactly that. He's a specialist. He's an astrophysician. Now get that. He's an astrophysicist specialized in exoplanet atmospheres. There you go, right? And so he's the he's the guy who knows that kind of stuff. And I'm and that's exactly what that episode that uh, that. Uh, collaboration is going to be about whenever it happens because Ryan is pretty busy because he just got accepted at uh, uh, the Carl Sagan Institute and. Um, He's a busy man, but he wants to do it and I want to do it. So it's going to happen. And if so, questions exactly like this are going to be answered on the episode. So, yeah, good question. Thank you very much for the super chat. Um, <clears throat> all right. I, I'm, I was asked if I can play a real really. Oh, I was asked that 20 minutes ago. I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm uh, it takes me a moment. I, people want to see the launch again. And since we still have about eight to nine minutes. I'm just gonna do that right now. 
I'm gonna go back all the way to where it lifted off, which is right there. So we can just take a look at that launch again. I'm sorry for it being 20 minutes late. Like I said, I'm, I'm always busy with answering the questions. It looks like a perfect launch. Very nice. It's beautiful to see that kind of stuff. I'm so looking forward to, to March to be able to see that in, in real as a I'm so I so envy anybody living on the Space Coast to can see that on a daily basis basically not on a daily basis but on a weekly basis almost that's just awesome on the other hand though if you live too close it might be annoying too windows shaking shaking all the time and stuff like that Yeah, there you have it. It's a perfect launch, basically. There's, it's just beautiful. Just did it, and that's it. All right, I'm going to go back to uh, to the to the live, because I really don't want to miss anything here, and it's just a rough estimate on the 10 minutes. Gulf of Aden coming up. That's a piratey area down there. Ships moving through that uh, through that uh, canal have have trouble, but the upper stage is safe. It's traveling fast enough and high enough. Nothing's gonna happen. Two hundred and thirty-five kilometers and twenty-six thousand nine hundred and twenty-two uh, twenty-five kilometers per hour. That is uh, impressive speed right there and roughly 10 more minutes to go you can already see in the in the lower on the bottom there you can see the SES2 coming up and the Seco2 of course uh, it's hard to tell if that's another 10 minutes I don't think so should be should be less than that we'll see We'll see, it's moving slow, but it is moving, and then that insurgent and burn will come, and uh, shortly after, like roughly 15 minutes after, we'll have the separ separation, and uh, in about 10 minutes as well, right when the insurgent and burn occurs, we should also see a fairing recovery. That's at about 45 minutes after launch, so that's coming up as well. And we have another super chat. Uh, do do we? No, we don't. No, that was that was Dave. All right. All right. Uh, I'm I'm gonna keep uh, scream if something changes because I I can. I'm when I answer questions I kind of lose it. <laughs> All right. Um, what about it? Uh, stupid monkey. I wonder if the barge uses Starlink internet. Yeah, we had that. Uh, it would be the perfect scenario. I don't think that there is enough Starlink satellites, though, to provide service yet. At least SpaceX is keep, keeps saying that it, that it is not enough yet. But it might be enough for a single barge. So, yeah. It would be the perfect scenario. Um... Teshua, that slide hop during landing is engineered as part of the suicide landing approach? I don't know. Uh, uh, we, we talked about it and people said that it is totally normal. I, I, I tend to agree because um, the, the landing, what the landing is supposed to do is uh, to recover the rocket and that's exactly what the landing did. And I've seen these kind of jumps before too, but I've also seen landings that looked more smooth than that. I, I, at least I think so. <clears throat> And now they're talking about the pirates. I should, I should have never mentioned that. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm going to keep uh, answering questions here, at least for a moment. Um, uh, uh, P PIDs Media. Anyone else not the color of the MVAC exhaust belt seemed less glowing hot. Um, we can't see that right now, but I can go a little bit back again so we can see it again. Uh, it is a radiation cooled nozzle, so it is normal if it glows. And here's not the burn occurring, so I have to go back up. Well, it looks about the same as always. 
if you ask me. If you look at this, it looks about the same as always. It depends on if the if the upper stage is in the shade or in on the dark side or in the in the sun while you see the the image recorded. If the if the second stage is going on the night side at the moment, it'll be bright white glowing, but if it's in the sun, it looks like this and it's always about that. So I I'd, I'd say that is absolutely the what we always see. Pal 9000, thank you. Thank you very much. You rock. Thanks for the super chat. That is much appreciated and uh I'm going to put it to good use. Thank you very much. Might even might even give a round of drinks in 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 Florida if it's enough. I would love to do that. Um we have Doug Kinney. Howdy, Felix. Are you heading to Boca after the launch in March? Yes, I will be in Boca Chica from March 7th to March 10th, and I'm so much looking forward to meeting up with locals. South Padre, uh, Gene has already said he's going to show me around. He wants to give me a surf lesson. And um, I'm going to meet Maria Pointer. I'm going to meet Austin Barnard. He's already said that he wants to meet. And of course, I'm going to do a local meetup there, and you're going to see me all over the place in these three days, basically. So I'm going to I'm gonna be uh, all over the the place in these three days. It, it'll be hard to not see me there, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give details of uh, the meetup location as soon as I got it because I right now I'm we're still planning on what to do on what day and so on and so forth, and uh, the the special guest that I'm not too sure yet if he's gonna make it, but if he's gonna make it, I w I would definitely want to spend time with him the guy that I'm going to do the collaboration with and all that kind of stuff still needs to fall into place basically. So I haven't got a date yet, but it's going to be on the 8th or on the 9th because on the 7th I'm going to arrive at midnight on the 7th with the plane because there wasn't another flight into Brownsville that I could have taken and uh, I'm going to fly back on March 10th at 6 in the morning. So uh, either it's either going to be the 8th or the 9th. If you want to meet there, there you go. There you go. It's in. Yes, we got a fairing catch. Now we now we're at uh, three out of ten. By the way, if you don't know the stats for uh, if this is go mystery, it's hard to tell which ship it is. But that's a catch, nonetheless. Awesome job, SpaceX. That is just awesome. They caught another one. Very very cool. And it dumped the the shoot right. Yeah, that's what it did. Or the wing, actually, because it's a it's more of a para wing than a parachute, right there. That's a gliding wing that they. Oh, what is it doing? Do not drop into the water. Uh, what is it doing? <laughs> oh my God! Ah, now they're lowering it. Good job. Yeah, took you took you a moment. <laughs> that was crazy. Did you see that? It was almost trying to hop off the net again. These things are hard to get. Yeah, but that's a perfect catch. Very nice. I'm, I'm curious to see if the other boat was lucky enough. As well, that would be awesome. Two fairings caught. That would be cool. Even one is impre impressive already. Yeah, very nice. We got, a, we got a fairing, everybody. We got a fairing. And we got another super chat from Daniel, Daniel Steck. Uh, another round from me. Thank you very, very much. That is much appreciated. Thank you. And another one from Robert. Robert Tone. Nice catch. Exactly. I agree. Thank you very much for the super chat. And that was an awesome catch. We've got an exciting update. As you can see on your screen, we were able to catch one of the fairing pads so far. This one is on Miss Tree. Yes. And we're still waiting to hear uh, if That's Miss Tree. All right. To catch the one on Miss Chief, the second That's awesome. Pad. That is awesome. Very, very cool. And for those who don't know, uh, the funny thing about this ca uh, boat, ca uh, this, these fairing catching boats, I gotta put the cat down on the ground again for a moment. Here's the streaming cat for those who want to see her. She, there she is. And I'm gonna put, a, put her on the ground now. And uh, the funny thing about the, uh, the, the boats, they are fully autonomous at the time they're catching. Um, there's no captain steering the boat or anything. It's just all computers, GPS signals, and uh, fairing detection that uh, basically makes this magic happen. 
which is even more awesome in my opinion that is fully automated uh, system maybe it's even a Tesla autopilot or something <laughs> fairing number two yeah I would love to see fairing num number two that's for sure Keith I want to see that fairing as well might be no video feed though we'll definitely hear hear about the about the second fairing from SpaceX and from Elon they're always tweeting about that kind of stuff but um, no video so far and the second one is on the ground now as well it's because they it takes them roughly the same time of course to hit the ocean and we're getting close to the insurg insurgent burn very close now maybe another two minutes or so and then if that works out in another 15 minutes we're gonna have the separation of the 60 Starlink satellites uh, which is just incredible and it's, it's just inc it's mind-blowing to me still even though a starship in the end uh, as proposed will be able to launch uh, 400 of these little satellites in one launch even 60 on a Falcon 9 is just incredible. I mean, name another company that <laughs> puts 60 satellites on one rocket in the in the space. Maybe maybe small sets, cube sets, or something like that. But not like a, a Starlink satellite is 225 kilograms roughly. So it's a pretty heavy satellite. It's not a huge one, but it's it still is a. It's 225 kilograms. Try to lift that up, and uh, it's putting 60 of them in space in on a single launch. And that's just basically due to the stacking inside the fairing, which is very, very clever again. Um, they even they are even built to hit each other on separation. It doesn't really matter. They'll just find find their course and 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 enter the appropriate orbit. Ah, that happens. And it happens. Water landing, so we will be pulling that fairing half out of Good. the water and hopefully reusing it again in the future. Uh, yes. Coming up next in about 30 seconds from now is will be SES 2 followed by Pico 2, and that's second engine start and second engine cutoff. Now this burn will last just one second long. It's when we pull oh, the wow. through, and that's because we are so close to our targeted orbit that if one second, it's like one poof. second burn we'll that's all. There. Uh, show it, show it. And it might not look like much because it is a one second burn. Show it. That live view. Ah. Uh, we didn't see it. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> it was just a one second burn. So it doesn't really matter. Now just waiting for confirmation of good orbit. Ah, there you go. Oh, and they... Come on. And then they're turning the camera away again. Why? <clears throat> you got to give it to SpaceX, though. The, the presentations are the best by far of any rocket launching company. Confirmation of good orbit. So now that second stage is in a good orbit and making its way to its final nice. destination. There you go. Very good. Another 14 minutes to go for the payload deploy. And we've got another super chat from Stan. Thank you very, very much with each chat, with each super chat. The trip is going to be better. So thank you very, very much for that. Um, all right. Uh, let me let me see if I can find some more questions that are that will fit into the 13 minute time window that we've got now. Um, what about the Dutch? Um, let me just, uh, so I don't skip any questions here. Uh, what, what was the delay? Yeah, um, Mr. Anderson, I have been planning for delays. I arrive 
in Florida on February 28th. And the initial thought was that I was just listening if they say anything that if uh, that star uh, that uh, CRS 20 would launch on March 1st and they're already at March 2nd now we're gonna leave uh, Florida on March 4th so we we planned two days before the launch or actually one day before the launch and five or four days after the launch that's the reason why we did that is so we can have a scrub or two maybe but uh, it's already on the second now so we only have basically one day left that they could uh, move the launch and if that happens and I can't see the launch first of all I'm gonna scream and secondly that's what happens when you go to a launch I'm, I'm I know that in advance and it, if it does happen, I'm 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 not gonna like it, but I'm gonna be prepared, and I'm gonna be um, I'm not gonna cry. At least I'm gonna try to. <laughs> so you can't change that. I can't stay forever because I want to go to Boca Chica as well, and my time's limited down there because I I want to come back again and produce some more episodes. So I can't stay in the United States for four weeks, and so that's that. So if it doesn't make it. It's going to be a very sad day for me, but uh, very insignificant for SpaceX. And that's uh, that's good as it is. So, um, yeah, Let, cross fingers that it launches on March 2nd and I'll be happy. Thank you. Um, uh, Edmund Jakobczak. Did anyone notice that the exhaust plume were a little off. They seemed more symmetrical and better color previously. Mm, that was just because it was in the sunlight. Seriously, if you if you if you see the, or or did you did you mean the landing booster? I wouldn't have seen anything there, and I uh, could go back, but I wanna wanna answer a few more questions. So I didn't notice anything there. And if you mean the second stage, that was because it was in the sunlight. That makes a lot of difference in invisible light because the camera, of course, can pick up the flame and the nozzle much better when it's in the dark, of course. <clears throat> um, what about the Dutch? Um, no, still not. I'm sorry. The Dutch have to wait a moment longer. Uh, this is Rex says, uh, what about the meetup in Brownsville? Yeah, uh, like I said, it's going to be either uh, March 8th or 9th. And I don't know the venue yet, but I'll, I'll post it as soon as I know anything. And if you know a good venue, tell me. Um, I'm open for suggestions right now. I'm, I've asked Gene and he probably knows a few good places. And uh, if anybody else knows a good place, uh, come forth, tell me. And I'll, I'll consider it, definitely. Um, Oxyzy is saying, what about it? What about the Dutch? There we go, the Dutch. Uh, the Dutch will be very, very close to the meetup in, in the Rhineland. So that, that should be an hour or maybe two hours of driving through the Netherlands and then uh, into Germany. So that should be doable. And I want to pick a place that is more most that is centered as most as it can be so the people from all around Europe can possibly reach it if I do if I do that meetup in France for example the people from Germany will be like why do you do this if I do that in the UK the people from Switzerland will be like why do you do this so I'm, I'm, I'm picking the Rhineland because it's close to me that is very convenient and it is pretty centered in Europe so um, do the two-hour trip I would love to meet you there definitely thank you for the question um, we have Vidura Virazinji. I, I, whew, thank you for the question. Uh, what about it? I think it was a rough landing. Maybe Merlin engine nozzle must have hit the deck of the ship. I don't, I don't think so. Settled position of the rocket is quite low. What do you think? Yeah, that was my, um, that's, I, I thought so too. But still, it didn't look like it, uh, the engine hit the deck. I don't think so. And uh, the, the main reason for the landing is to recover the booster. If you have to replace the legs afterwards, that is uh, an easy thing to do. Um, the legs are built to withstand a rough landing. They have crush blocks and they have dampeners. And uh, do you, do they, they? I think they have dampeners. They definitely have a crush block. I don't know if they have an active dampening system other than the crush block, but they're still, they're built to take a beating. And if they break, you replace them and use the booster again. So um, I, I don't think the landing was that rough. Thanks for the question though. And it, it, it definitely did look kind of rough to me. Uh, 
Crab Grace, why do you think SpaceX is showing the animated version instead of the live feed most of the time? Um, that's a good question. Um, because there's zero happening on the live feed right now. Like, literally nothing is happening there. You could see the uh, the second stage's nozzle and that's basically it. Or you could see the, 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 the satellites without the fairing. And we're halfway there to deploy right now, which is awesome. And uh, you can actually see more on the on this animation. You can see where the satellite is. You can you can see when the deploy is coming closer, and you see the time, and you see the the speed and the altitude. The globe tells you more than the stages footage right now, I guess. It would be nice though if they would switch it now and then. I wouldn't have a problem with that, which they don't. I think I've been answering so many questions. Yeah, well, they do it when something happening. But other than that, they're showing the animation. Yeah, well, um, it could also be, I've heard before that SpaceX in the beginning had trouble of even showing pictures of the Earth live on a stream because there were some um, security related issues uh, with the United States government, I think, but we're now west of Australia here. So that shouldn't be a problem. I don't know. It's probably just because there's zero happening with the second stage right now. There's nothing to see. Um, DB Crypto has had a super chat. I think I've said that already, though. Yeah, that was the, the cryptocurrency. Exactly. Thank you very much. Um, icing on the cake. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, um, let me just see some. Oh, uh, if you if you're if you've got the time, hit the like button. Uh, we've got fourteen hundred people watching and eight hundred likes, so a few haven't liked it yet, and it helps the stream to go up. So um, it's it's uh, support that doesn't cost you anything. So if you've got to, if you've got the time, like the stream. Always like like like. Um, Berlin Aussie, Berlin Aussie is saying, Felix, will you be watching the Tesla Gigafactory being built in Germany? Yes. If I can make it at all, I'll be going there and watching their progress because it is, um, it, they they also already announced that there's going to be a factory and a research facility for batteries included. And I'm so happy that Tesla invested into Germany. The German car companies, I hope nobody of them is watching right now, need a good kicking right now. They need to, to step up the game on electric vehicles and uh, they're pretty slow to adapt, especially BMW, for example. I drive a BMW and they've been very, very slow to adapt. And so, yeah, Tesla, uh, kick their asses and uh, make, them, make them understand that that's the way to go. And uh, yeah, if I can, I'm definitely gonna De definitely gonna uh, check out the Gigafactory for uh, progress um, very close to Berlin, which is awesome. And they're gonna build a um, Model Ys, as I know right now, as I think right now. And I want to have uh, either a Model 3 or a Model Y. So buying a Model Y that is built in Germany would be a special treat for me, of course, because I'm German. And uh, yeah, so yeah, thank you. Good question. And I will try to definitely. CF Blackface, uh, has SpaceX ever had a failure, real launch mission? Yes, they have. Uh, CRS 7, I think? 6, 7? Can somebody help me if it was 6 or 7? That was uh, rather bad. And uh, they had the exploding uh, Facebook satellite. Uh, but that was on the pad while fueling it, I think. And they had three Falcon 1s that didn't make it into space. 7, right? Yeah, it was 7. <clears throat> so yeah, they've had uh, had their failures. Uh, everybody who launches rockets has their failures, especially somebody who's starting to build orbital rockets right now. And uh, SpaceX back then at Sirius 7 definitely was a starter. And it's amazing what they've accomplished in such a short time to have such a reliable rocket going and landing and catching fairings and deploying 60 Starlink satellites. <laughs> it's... it's it's happened so many times already that we tend to forget how special this actually is. N zero other companies in the world are doing this. What we can just see right now, live broadcasted with cameras uh, to our uh, PCs or cell phones or whatever you're watching from in the whole world. This is just, it, it's just insane how, how, 
how far SpaceX has come in such a short time. But yep, they had their failures. They did. That is for sure. Uh, there's a good video on YouTube if you are interested in the landing failures. It's called How to Not Land an Orbital Rocket Booster, I think, or something like that. It, if somebody can put a link in, in, the, in, the, in the chat for those who might not know it, it is worth it. <laughs> it's a really funny video. And another good, uh, good one on, on, on SpaceX because they are not even afraid to show, you, show their failures. Uh, any other rocket company that has t failures while testing, they'll say, no, no, it worked perfectly. We're just analyzing the data. Nothing wrong, nothing to see here. And SpaceX is like, yup, we, we messed it up and we stand by it. So <laughs> another one on SpaceX, they're, they're awesome. It's a, it's a, they, they do so many things right. You gotta give them that. That's for sure. Definitely. I'm gonna close the door real quick. One second. The cat opened it again. There we go. Because the kids are roaming the house. They are not watching the rocket launch. And they're opening the door. Papa, das ist wunderbar. Aber ich bin am Livestreamen. That was my daughter, by the way. She just told me that there's gonna be cake after the live stream, which is awesome. And she left the door open again. And as a good daddy, I close it again. All right, we're back. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. Uh, Joe McDonald, thank you very much for the live stream. Uh, please turn up the audio on SpaceX. Yeah, I can do that. That's easy. There you go. Better. We're still going in on the on the uh, deployment here. It should take a hey, four to four to five minutes. No, actually, according to the time. Should be more like one minute or so. <clears throat> Let's just look at that real quick. <laughs> Cake is a lie, yeah. My, my German sounds more American than my English sounds German. Okay. Also, wenn ich möchte, kann ich ganz normales Deutsch sprechen. <laughs> uh, thank you for the super chat, Birmergeezer. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm imagining it being pretty awesome right now. So, uh, if it's even better than that, it's going to be awesome. I mean, it's going to be awesome anyway. Welcome What's the flashing? The oh, that's the... Uh, if you've watched our What's previous the flashing? webcasts, you're aware that our satellites are flatly packed with no dispenser, and that the deployment RCS? is a little bit different from what you'll see on a typical launch. The satellites will slowly disperse upon deploy, and they may even bump into one another, which is to be expected. The satellites were designed with this in mind, and we are <laughs> less than one minute away from deployment of the Starlink satellites. Eight more likes to 1,000. All right, can we get that? Nine, 994. Before the deployment. Oh, 95. Thousand's a nice number, definitely. Oh, there we go. All right, thanks. You can stop liking now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for the support. All right, we got a deployment to watch here. Concentrate on the deployment, not the like button. Because this is the final moment. Okay, so after the satellites deploy, they are going to over time separate from one another and use their onboard Krypton ion thrusters in order to space themselves out into, or into their orbital planes and raise their altitude to their operational orbit of 550 kilometers. Yep. Our insertion orbit, orbit, if you remember today, is about 290 kilometers above the Earth. No, it, which is pretty low. There we go, look at that. Even with the sunrise. Look at that beautiful view. Yeah. Okay, well, the one of the... Of the animation's cool too, but hopefully we'll get back... No, no, get back to that camera space. feed. Why are they not showing Starlight this? Starlight tension rod separation confirmed. Okay, we just heard the call out that... Come that on! Separation ...has been confirmed. Let's see if we can get another view. Maybe they're really doing cool. that like with a... Yeah, coming up there we go yeah, there we go oh, that's gorgeous that's those 60 starlink satellites successfully look at those on the bottom on the right they're already twisted 
Looks like they uh, the got stuck for a second or something. Internet service too, which is super, super exciting. And with that, they're turning that around on the other side even. To a close. We had a successful mission. We had a great stage one ascent, completing the hat trick, launching from three separate launch sites. We had the third recovery oh, of awesome. this booster. Stage two delivered Starlink to its operation or to its targeted okay. orbit. And as you just saw, we successfully separated mm -hmm. those 60 Starlink satellite okay. satellites. Thanks. So, oh, and also we caught a fairing. That's a big deal <laughs> and super awesome. And we were able to see it in the daytime, which is even more cool. So a big thank you to the 45th Space Wing for range safety and to the FAA for licensing today's successful launch. We'd also like to thank all of you, our viewers, for tuning in this morning. Follow our website and social media platforms yeah, that for was updates just awesome. on our next missions right, I'm gonna and milestones. And until next time, have a great morning. Turn down the, the headset audio here real quick. Das, du, ich bin immer noch dran. Geh mal bitte raus. Geh mal bitte raus und ich komme gleich, okay? Danke sehr. Und schön vorsichtig. Ja, ich weiß. Danke. Hop, 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 hop. Ja. Ja, danke. That was my son. All right, it's really busy in here today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn down the volume a little bit more. And uh, I'm just going to let the... the uh, no, that's... Uh, that's, uh, that's Oh, nice. It's, it's, it's suggesting my videos. That is at least good. I'm just going to let the, the start roll here while I'm answering a few more questions. Let me just uh, go to, there we go. Why is it not doing that? It should be doing that. And I'm a fan of Joe, Joe Scott. Uh, it's, it's not letting me do that, which is a pity. Oh no. Oh, there we go, ha ha ha. All right, I'm going to set it up like this, turn this volume a bit down, and make that go into the corner if I can. Mm, no. There we go. All right, we can just leave this going in the background, and I'll be answering a few more questions for you guys. There we go. A oh, beautiful launch. All right, we've done it. We've done everything. We've put check marks basically behind everything we want SpaceX wanted to do today. They launched the rocket, they recovered the booster, they recovered the fairings, they they uh they um deployed the 60 satellites. They um they had a flawless mission basically. That's that's all there there is to say and it was even in the in the in the in the um it was even a sunrise in the background while the while the satellites got deployed. So that is basically the best you can get. And while we were watching the deployment, my my daughter brought me this delicious piece of goodie. And I'm not gonna eat it while the live stream is going on because it's covered in powder sugar on top, and I would <laughs> look really funny while eating it. But uh, I'm gonna eat that later. So the cake's not a lie. There it is. It's not a cake, but I'm I I think there's gonna be cake even later um where do you get those youtube stats from oh you've probably seen my add-on that is an add-on that is called vidiq i just use that to analyze my specifically my stats a little bit more um vidiq is the name it's a it's a it's for free and it's an add-on for the browser you can just google that now that's not a donut uh, most Americans would say, look, it's a donut, but it is not a donut. It's a Ber Berliner or Krapfen, as most people say in Germany. And it is filled with jam on the inside, and it does not have a hole, as you can see. And it tastes quite different than a donut as well. It's much softer inside. Uh, donuts are more stiff inside. And uh, this thing is really, really fluffy and soft on the inside. So it's not a donut. And it's not Pfannkuchen either. Pfannkuchen is a flat and it's baked in the pan. At least that's what I know. But uh, yeah, I'm a Berliner. Exactly. And it is it is definitely delicious. Um, um, and now we're talking about my food. That is amazing. I've got 1,200 people watching me talking about my food. Thank you very much. While the SpaceX launch is going on in the background, welcome to the future. Um, SpaceX did an awesome job. Uh, of delivering yet another flawless Starlink mission. And we are up to 240 satellites now, uh, 180 of the V1 satellites. And at 400, um, SpaceX is gonna be able 
to provide service to the first people on the ground, which is really close now. Um, as you see, they, they launch these satellites every week now, right now. It's, 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 it's pretty awesome how, how fast they're doing this. And um, there you can see the separation again. Perfectly executed mission, basically. And uh, yeah, it was a joy to watch. All right, uh, I'm gonna see if I can do a few more questions here for you because you've been very busy writing questions to me today and I hope I can answer, uh, like I said, a few more of them. Um, Teshua is asking, what about a deployable landing pad for moon landings? Uh, something like a giant blanket that anchors or drills itself into the lunar surface after landing with robust robots in corners. That is a, I've never heard even about a concept about that. Uh, in theory, it sounds good. In, 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 uh, it would be pretty heavy, though, because it has to be very stable. So I don't know how to, maybe you could make it out of comp it, it actually is a pretty cool idea i've never heard of that before if you especially if you if you put it up in segments sounds like a cool idea definitely i don't know if it's viable if it's feasible or anything but it sounds like a cool idea i haven't heard about anything like that what i've heard is 3d printing robots being sent to the surface of either moon or mars it would work on both they've done extensive testing with uh simulated sim simulated martian surface and luna well we precisely know what both are off so you can pretty much uh, simulate the surfaces pretty well and they've they've done 3d printing with it i've seen it at isa um uh, live uh, at the ESA Open Day, they had uh, 3D printing results from Luna and Mars regulars right there, and they showed the robots. and It is pretty advanced. It is not just a uh, computer animation you can find on YouTube. It exists, and if they if they send these robots uh, to 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 build habitats and to build landing pads, I think that would be a really good solution. But your uh, your idea is pretty good as well. I've never I've never heard of anything like that. So that would be interesting. Definitely. Very nice. Thank you. Um, Patrick Critter. Uh, what can we expect from the rest of the mission? Sorry, I missed everything uh, till now. All right. <laughs> the mission's running again right now. And it was a perfect execution. Like I said, um, the satellites are going into their uh, intended orbit right now. As you heard, it was like, what, two, 280 kilometers uh, is what they're going to go gonna go for this time so it is very very low um and uh, everything else went perfect they uh, uh recovered the fairings they recovered one of the fairings with the with the boat and the other one they're gonna pick out of the water and um the booster is recovered and uh everything everything went really really nice and again as i said before uh you gotta always keep in mind that most of the stuff that you've seen on this mission no other company can do that right now. Nobody can recover a booster like this. Nobody can d deploy 60 of those satellites at the same time. Nobody can catch a fairing. It's just, <laughs> that's SpaceX right there. So <laughs> good job, SpaceX. Again, uh, it, it's a joy to watch it. It really is SpaceX rocks. And it, it, it's easy to say that. It's incredible. It is incredible. And uh, we have Tam Hewitt, Baker. What about it? Uh, Danke für deine weiteres tolles live video um comes about now shot um uh, so he said uh, thank you very much for the for the live video and are are you coming to scotland soon um my my wife's gonna come to scotland very very soon i don't know if i can make it because i've got so many other things right now i'm planning to visit Ty um tyler Ty Ty tyler i don't even i can't Tyler, I think it is Tyler, uh, a, a Scottish uh, rocket startup that is going to send orbital rockets into space from Scotland, which is amazing. And I'm going to do an interview with them on the 14th of February, and I'm hopefully going to visit their facilities this year. And that would mean I'm going to Scotland. But I don't know if it's going to happen because there's so much stuff that I'm doing right now. So uh, if it's happening next year, don't be sad, but it's going to happen um, because uh, Skylar, that's the that's the company's name. Did I say that? Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely going to go visit them. I don't know when that's going to happen, though. I'm, I'm sorry. There's so much stuff. Uh, S. 
S. Ludwig, thank you very, very much for the for the super chat. Again, it's going to go into the funding for the CRS uh, uh, 20 mission in uh, March and <laughs> my, my away mission, basically. And every dollar you give me is going to make that journey more enjoyable. So you're you're uh, you're uh, on, my, on the top list of the of the people who donated uh, for this. If you do a super chat today and uh, Thank you very, very, very much for, for, for all the support. That is much appreciated. Um, Leandro Cura, another super chat. Thank you very much. Great job with this coverage. Support from Argentina. Thank you very, very much. I've never been to uh, South America. And uh, I'm, that's another spot I'm missing. It's South America and Asia. I've never been to. And I regret that because I love traveling. I've been to Alaska and I've been to uh, northern Sweden and I've been to all over Europe, basically. And but I've never been to South America and I've never been to Asia and th those are on the list. Thank you very, very much for the super chat. Okay. Um, we have, uh, how big is each satellite? Uh, t uh, Tranquility Base, super cool Nick, is asking how big is each satellite? I can tell you that the satellites are 250 something or 225 kilograms, I think, uh, heavy, and that the solar sails are 10 meters extending outwards. So they are not that big. Um, I don't know the exact numbers but it's probably easily researchable if i would google it right now if anybody can just google that real quick because that there there's going to be a precise measurement on the internet already probably so i'm uh but i don't know that from the top of my head but i know that the solar sail extends around 10, 10 meters yeah skip asia for six months yeah it's a uh, trouble what's going on there tony thank you for the comment um yeah uh actually my my uh one of my one of my business contacts right now is in Taiwan, and I really hope that he's not going to uh, get any diseases while he's down there. Eat the goddamn cake. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. I'm If I'm really careful i'll i'll bite into it <laughs> but this is covered in powder sugar i mean if i just go like munch i'll be white all over the place but i'm gonna do it anyway so here you go mm, 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 mm. and it is delicious you see in here you see that that's the jam and then there's the white sugar all over the place and i'm spitting on the microphone right now <laughs> it is delicious Thank you very much for making me do this. <laughs> now my hands are all sticky. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. That's much appreciated. I've already done it. You can stop spending money on it. <laughs> Thank you, Jedi. Um, it's a delicious one, though. It's really, really good. Yep. I agree, Tony. This was an awesome, awesome mission. Really, really nice. All right. Um, eat the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Quite, um, how the satellites can uh, um, Paul is asking how the satelli satellites can correct the position if they start turn like that uh, because they have a um, RCS system um, I uh, I think it's is it ion thrusters I don't know uh, real quick from somebody who really knows about what they're talking, uh, maybe, maybe Odysseus, you, you probably know about this. What's the position correction system on the, on the, uh, Starlink satellites? What are they using? I wouldn't know off the top of my head. Is it normal RCS cold gas or is it an ion thruster? I know they have ion thrusters on crypt. Yeah, exactly. It was the Krypton thrusters because they are cheaper. I remember. Yep. So that's what they use to change their position. But do they use that? They, I, I think they only use that for orbit raising and, and, and lowering, isn't it? Is it also for when they want to turn? How do they do that? Do they have like six Krypton thrusters in each direction? <laughs> You're very welcome, Gareth. Thank you very much for the super chat. <laughs> Cake goes far on live streams. I'm reading the chat right now. Somebody can tell me. Is it ju just the Krypton thrusters, right? I've read an article about it before, that the Krypton was chosen, that it is more corrosive 
than um, Xenon, for example, but uh, that they chose it because it's far cheaper, which would definitely fit into SpaceX's plan all the time there. They're trying to lower lower the costs. <laughs> my wife is writing to me that I still have something in my beard somewhere from the cake. But that's what you wanted and that's what you get. If I look messed up after that, that's not my fault. Attitude control, yeah. But did, then they should have attitude control thrusters, right? And do they the question is do they use the Krypton thrusters to um to change attitude not to raise or lower the orbit uh, we know that that's the Krypton thrusters but do they use those also for attitude control you're welcome silver I am a jelly donut <laughs> tell that to somebody from Berlin <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's spacex.com slash Starlink. I have. I've seen Star Trek Picard and I love it. I loved it. I seriously did. I, I, I It was something completely new and that was to be expected, but I really, really liked it and I hope it's going to continue in the same in the same way. I'm looking forward to Friday when we get the next episode. It was really good. <laughs> Well, uh, Krypton is definitely uh, corrosive. It is more. It, 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 I, I can't. I'm not a chemist, so I can't tell you exactly how that works. But that's what the article said. It is more corrosive on the on the on the engine itself, um, but it is far cheaper than xenon, and that's why they chose it. How that works in detail? Huh. Good question. Yeah, once the gas runs out, the engine won't work. But it takes a long time until the gas runs out. So there, there you can see the heartbeat again. I just love that every time. Um, just going to see if we can get another one of the the landing burn that was already while I was doing the the questions. There you go. That's the landing again. And then... Well, the more I look at it, it the more smooth it looks, actually. But uh, it, it definitely looks like it went down a lot, at least. But it does. It definitely also looks like it didn't damage anything. That is for sure. We'll see on the on the recovery pictures. Julia Bergeron does normally does a really really nice job with the with the pictures of the booster coming back into harbor, and um, we should definitely see something there. Um, rather be blades thank you very much thank you for the super chat that's much much appreciated thank you no it's an it's not a donut it's not a donut it definitely isn't look at this that is something completely different than a donut because it does not have and it's much softer if i squeeze it like it's a stupid camera it doesn't want to focus i'm sorry um, if I squeeze it like this, it is super soft on the inside and donut is more stiff on the inside and it tastes different too. We have donuts in Germany, so, but um, we even have Dunkin' Donuts and uh, it's definitely something different than that. It's a Berliner. It's something unique. I've, I've, I haven't even seen something like that in any other country yet, I guess. Similar stuff, but not like that. And I love them. They taste really good. They do. All right, it's a jelly donut. There you go. If you want to say it's a jelly donut, do that. <laughs> You're free to call it whatever you want. All right, guys. Um, I am. Now I'm hungry, exactly. <laughs> this is the show all about space, science, and jelly donuts. There you go. Um, I'm going to wrap it up now because um, I've I've been streaming for how long? I've, I'm always almost three hours already that's pretty good and i still have to do some work today because tomorrow is uh release day for the episode and uh there's still some editing to do and it's uh it's gonna be um it's one of those episodes that i really put a lot of heart into because the the the, the whole nasa build topic really got me going it's it's i i had to 
I had to watch it very carefully so it wouldn't turn into a rant and I hope I managed to do so because I really don't want to rant but I'm gonna point out a few things and I hope you're gonna enjoy it and like I said stay civil on the comments everybody can make their point but just don't start insulting people and say that they're whatever whatever peep 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 you know just just say it in civil words um, and uh, yeah it's gonna be released in the afternoon of course consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet and uh, like the stream if you haven't yet and consider becoming a patron or buy a t-shirt or um, support me in any way you can support me because that's what small YouTube channels basically need I'm doing this full-time and so I'm uh, uh, and that's the reason why you get two episodes per week because otherwise that wouldn't be possible and the more support I get the easier the whole process for gets for me of course so if you've got any any ways of supporting I'm I'm very very happy even if it's just pushing the like button because that helps it does the algorithm sees it and thinks wow the people liked it and so I'm my next episode is going to be viewed more and because it's being shown more by the algorithm as simple as it is and um yeah, that's that's all I gotta say right now. Thank you, thank you for showing up again. It's still 800 people watching here, which is amazing. We peaked at I don't know almost 2,000, I think, which is crazy. And I'm uh, I'm 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 still. It's been seven months since I've been doing this, and I'm not used to this yet. I'm 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 guessing somebody like Tim Dodd is just sitting down in front of the camera with 50,000 people. For me, this is still something pretty special, and. Uh, uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you, and uh, I'm going to see you on tomorrow's episode. And uh, as always, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of music here for, for the next 15 minutes, and then the, the stream will shut down, and I'll be seeing you tomorrow. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, have, a great, have a great evening or day or whatever where you are, and uh, I'll be seeing you. Bye-bye.
everywhere you go.